Hello friends, Mali Ponfadit here, CEO of the SOAR Community Network and co-founder of the SOAR Community Nebula. We have a goal this year to interview 1,000 champions for change, change agents as we call them, in our community, in our world. And today we are featuring Dr. Terilyn Curry Avery. Thank you so much for being with us. Hi, Molly. How are you all? I'm so glad to be here. I am so delighted to have you here. Um, we haven't seen each other's face in a few months, and I'm, I'm really excited to share what's in your heart uh, to, to do in the world and to share what you stand for. So, Miss, um, Miss Terrellyn, I'll call you because you're my dear friend, doctor. Uh, what do you do in the world? Introduce yourself. Let our audience get to know you a little bit. Well, Molly, so what I do in the world really is, is I'm a champion for people and my ideas are to help people to manifest their greatness in whatever they do. But I define and call myself a pastologist because as you know, I have um, a degree in psychology and I have a divinity degree. I'm an ordained pastor. And so I really love to merge those two things and I help transformational leaders and I support them as they're moving from one level of their greatness to the next level of their greatness by helping them to, um, you know, just live out their faith in the midst of their calling, whatever that is for them. And so I want to support them in matters of faith, matters of the heart, and really matters of the human psyche. And I want to help them to do that in a way that will be healthy for them and healthy for the people that they serve, because sometimes we kind of get lost in the doing and we forget about the being and who we are and who we were called to be when we started our, our projects or our purpose or our calling. Terrell, what I love about your work is many years ago, we intuitively, those that are, that are in leadership development and people development, intuitively knew that this was the way to go. And now there are so many metrics and data to support the desire for leaders to become more conscious, more mindful, and that means to also be more connected uh, spiritually, which yes. is such a great thing that you're, you've been doing this forever, mm -hmm. and now it's really become a valid, viable thing. And I so love that. I love now that we're at an age where we can walk into a corporate setting or we can walk into some other setting and say, listen, we need to be conscious about who we are spiritually, who we are, uh, who, who were we when we first entered into this realm, right? You know, there's the spiritual realm and there's the human realm, but who were we called here to be during this time and space? And I think that what happens is, you know, we get caught up in, in the titles or the materialism or all these other things. Ego really is what it is. We get caught up in, in ego and we just forget. And so I love now that people are called more to consciousness and spirit. And I think that that's because we're seeing a world that's in turmoil and that, um, that needs to shift a little bit. And I think people are taking a step back and saying, how do I make this world be the world that I want to be? So, you know, how do I be the change that I want to see in the world? So I'm super excited, um, especially as a pastor. I love when I can work with people around spiritual matters. It doesn't have to be what my belief is, but it really is about how are you living out your faith in your day to day? So I'm, I'm excited when I, for instance, will you know, hear folks who are in the political arena, arena talk about who their spiritual advisors are, because that means that they're grounded in something, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, the absence of that to me can become really, really harmful because I think when we don't think about um, spirit, we forget that we are here to serve other people as well, that there's a shared humanity. Mm, I love it. I love it so much. All right. As you look back upon your life and all the collective experiences, uh, do you have anything that comes to mind where empathy, love, compassion, mentorship really bubbles up to remind you of how you're operating in life and who you're being? Yeah. You know, 
Molly, it's really interesting because, you know, at my age, I have had lots of uh, experiences where people have been really kind and compassionate towards me and really people who've allowed me to be the person that I am and nurtured me into that. And so for me, it goes all the way back to my mom and dad. And, and I come from a big family who, who really nurtured me and who tolerated. And I say tolerated because I ask a ton of questions when I grew up and they tolerated me asking those questions, even biblically. But the person who comes to mind the most for me, um, just in terms of his indulgence, because he was not a family member, was this gentleman by the name of Mr. Melvin Ford. And he died somewhere around, I think, 104. So when I was in high school, he was in his late 80s. And we had, I grew up in a small town. So one time uh, his wife was very ill. And so my girlfriend and I, we were in high school and we had to go down and stay with them so we could help take care of them. So I developed a close relationship with them. And I can remember that after his wife died, I would go and visit. When I was still in high school. He tolerated all of the questions I had about the Bible. And he, at the same time, opened my eyes by asking me questions that really caused me to think about what I believed about the Bible as well. And so I think it's helped to shape me and make me the person that I am today, particularly because um, I can think outside of my own belief system because he asked me questions and he allowed me to ask those questions. And so he is someone that I think of as just being a profound influence on my life and, and helping me to be the woman that I am today. Well, you talked about asking a lot of questions when you were younger, um, which is one of the key attributes to being a great leader is curiosity. And I will uh, say that I've experienced you firsthand and you still ask a lot of questions. <laughs> Yes, I do. As we talk about attributes and characteristics, when you think of community champions uh, and people who are creating just great impact in your life and in the world, what characteristics come to mind? Wow, I think about people who are committed to their work and who are willing to sacrifice and people who are really able to see that it's not about them. It is about the greater good. So it doesn't mean that you won't benefit, but it really is about more than just you. And so I really have to say that one of my sheroes is Fannie Lou Hamer. I just did a blog on her a couple of weeks back because this was a woman who was beaten nearly to death. And she decided that she was going to still fight for the rights of, of African Americans to have the right to vote. And I just think about what, I mean, like what commitment and what sacrifice, you know? And she understood that if people in Mississippi could vote, then people everywhere could vote. And so those are some of the attributes that I think about, like just really, again, uh, being committed and sacrificing and knowing that, hey, it's not about me. It's really about the greater good. That's fantastic. That just gave me chills. Um, when you think about your skill sets, your lessons learned, your whole journey up to this point, how are you paying it forward? How are you contributing to community uh, and causes? How are you supporting others? Can you give some examples and perhaps mention some causes that matter? Yes. And one of those causes, it, it always continues to go back to people spiritually um, as well as psychologically. Um, you know, Molly, that one of my passions and, and a group of people that I do work with are those who have been wounded by religion. Because I believe that when I was allowed to ask those questions and when Mr. Mel asked me those questions, it opened the door for me to think, about the ways in which we judge people and which we wound people with our rigid beliefs. And so now I do a lot of work around helping folks heal from the wounds of religion. Also, when I'm working with transformational leaders, I'm working from the top down. 
And so I want to uh, really, really just work with the people who are pastors and priests and the higher ups, because we have to start with them, right? Mm -hmm. And I am learning more and more in my work is that people just simply don't know what they don't know. They don't recognize these wounds because we've lived out our religion in the way we have for so long that we use our... Um, doctrine, our behaviors, even the things that we say and do around prayer sometimes in harmful ways, and we just don't even recognize it. So I'm really passionate about uh, using both of my, my psychology and divinity degrees to really help uh, to make the world a healthier place for people who, um, who've had some hurts around religion. Just such a great thing you're doing. Like I said, you know, with these uh, beautiful leaders stepping up and saying, I need more, I need more help, I need more support uh, and spiritual guidance. You're, you're so positioned for this work. You, you, God knew what he was doing. <laughs> she was doing whatever you believe, <laughs> certainly uh, preparing you for, for this. Uh, when you go through life, it's not always easy, as we all know. And there are days, moments, years where it's dark sometimes. What philosophy, motto, or quote empowers you during those times to keep moving forward? I know there are a lot of them, but are there one or two that really resonate with you? So, yes, there are. And so from my, my biblical uh, beliefs, there's a... Um, a scripture that says I can do all things through uh, Christ or God who strengthens me. So whenever I am feeling a weak moment, uh, and because those come when we're doing this very challenging work, I just rely on that scripture that I can do everything that I need to do because God has already positioned me to do it. And so I have to just keep moving forward and I'm called to do it. So I might have my little moment, have your moment and get going because I serve uh, a higher power who will sustain me. But the second thing that I think about during difficult times, my, most, my mother used to have a saying, and I don't know if this is something um, that someone else said that she got it from them, but she always said that when you have your hand in the lion's mouth, you have to move gently, right? Mm -hmm. And so it made me think about when you're going through life's troubles, you can't rush to get to the next step. You have to be thoughtful about how you're going to move through those difficult times. And so when I have a time that's like, what is going on here, God? You call me to do this work. And it's so very challenging. I think about, okay, move gently, move gently. Maybe you're in the lion's mouth right now, but if you're strategic about it and you pull your hand out gently, perhaps that lion won't bite might get a couple scrapes, but it won't bite, right? And so I just rely on, on the strength of that. And I, I really rely on the strength of my ancestors as well. Mm, grace, the word grace just comes yeah. to mind. Yes. yes. Ms. Terrellyn, what does a better world look like through your eyes? You know, a better world looks like love and an understanding that we have a shared humanity. And when I understand that I have a shared humanity, it means that I will be careful about what I do to other folks. I will be careful about what I allow other folks to do to me. And I really will be careful about what I do to myself. Mm -hmm. And so for me to sum all of that up means that I recognize that I am divinely created and loved unconditionally. So I don't have to rely on all of this outside stuff that internally, that's who I am. And I'm going to treat other people as such. Thank you so much for your beautiful and empowering insights. Can you please share with our audience how they can connect with you, learn more about you, follow you, hire you, fill in the <laughs> blank. <laughs> 
Well, so the easiest way to connect with me is really to go to my website at sacredintelligence.com. That's intelligence.com. And um, if you just think about the merger of psychology and theology together, and um, there's a contact page there and they can um, email me there or they can call me. Um, my office number is 860 four three seven zero five one seven that's also on the website as well they can follow me on twitter uh, dr tlc avery and follow me on instagram as well with Carolyn curry avery so can you let us know where you're hailing from where where you're dialing in from i am dialing in from connecticut that's awesome. in the cold but it's not quite so cold right now but i'm in you connecticut look, you look very springy so that's thank good you. thank Keep you i'm trying I'm ushering it in. That's right. Well, it's warm today here. So thank you so much again. Thank you for being a part of our community. Thank you for taking part in this 1000 Change Agent interview series. We truly, truly appreciate you for uh, the work that you do and for being who you are and for being a soul sister. Thank you so thank much. You, Molly. Thank you. I so appreciate you all too. Thank you and keep up the good work that you're doing as well. Bless you. Thank you so much. Those tuning in, thank you so much again for tuning in, following us as we um, inspire the world with these amazing stories of change makers and community builders. If you would like to nominate yourself, please remember to nominate yourself or someone in the community who's making a huge impact, please go to nebula.soar, that's S-O-A-R, communitynetwork.com. If you would like a live demo of what's inside our Nebula platform, please let us know. Contact us at info at soarcommunitynetwork.com. Thank you everyone for tuning in and we will speak to you very, very soon. Take care for now.